are they go back to the source and I have whole sections in my book describing what everyone says the source is God mm -hmm. they all describe it the same way mm -hmm. these are souls that have never been in any kind of a body at all can you imagine how uh, traumatic it would be to come pure from the source and to this world yes now. I can <laughs> very disturbing very but challenging. Many people have done that. They go yes. back to the source where they are one with God, where we all began. People are always asking me, they say in their session, I want to know where I'm from. Mm -hmm. So we're all from the same place. Mm -hmm. And they want to know, well, what about my home? I said, it's all the same place. They think of a home planet or something like that. That's not what it's about. It's all, us. we all came from the source, from God, and that's where we all began. And when they're there, it is so full of love, and it's all this togetherness that they don't want to leave. Yes. So in the sessions, I ask them, well, why did you leave? It was so beautiful. I know they left because I'm talking to a body that's laying on the bed. Why did you leave? And they all say the same thing. We heard the call. They heard the call that went out, even to the other planets, to the space people, and to the ones who had never been out in from the source, we heard the call, Earth is in trouble, will you go and help? And many of them describe meetings on the spirit side even, where they're saying, who wants to go and help? And I, one woman said, and I raised my hand, <laughs> and she said, what was I thinking of? No, there you go. So here she is, and here many of them are, and this story, so there are these consistencies you're hearing. Oh, I, I do waves. thousands and thousands of people. Yes. When you get the same story for so many people, I put this all together like a puzzle. Yes. Bits and pieces. So the first way were the ones that had the most trouble. I guess you would say they were in their later 50s, some are in their 40s, but people, some people say they think that early 60s would fall into the same pattern. It probably will because that's about how long ago yeah, that we World dropped the bomb. Mm -hmm. But these are the ones who don't want to be here. They're very unhappy. They have good families, they have jobs, but they don't want to be here. They don't like it. They want to go home. They don't know where home is, but they know it's not here. They don't like the violence, they don't understand it, and Many of these first waivers have tried to commit suicide at different points in their life to get out of here. I have a question at this point. If they, if they came in <clears throat> and they went through the traditional thing that happens when you incarnate here, which is essentially a case of amnesia, and they don't understand consciously what they're doing here, what are they functionally doing while they're here to help shift those frequencies <clears throat> or further this evolutionary process? The first wave are just living like everybody else. It's the second wave that are doing the different things. But the first wave are the ones who they don't want to be here, mm -hmm. and they wanted to commit suicide, and they've had a very hard time. But the second wave, I found, would be in their 20s, 30s, maybe some over into the 40s. And when I'm doing them, they, are, they said they are called antennas, generators. They're here just to generate positive energy. Mm -hmm. to an, affect everyone else. Yes, that makes sense. My son is in that age group and he and his friends are just beautiful beings who really do work toward generating communal friendships, supporting each other, non-judgment. It's beautiful. Well, they said those kind of people can walk through a crowded mall or a store and their energy will affect anyone that is there. Yes. Not consciously, they don't realize what they're doing but their energy is supposed to be generated to affect other people. Mm -hmm. And I've had people come and say, what's my purpose? What am I supposed to be doing here? And the second wave, they'll usually say, you're just to be. And they don't like that when they wake up. They say, but I wanted to be doing something. All you're supposed to do is just be and allow the energy to affect other people. Yes. But the irony of it is that a lot of the second waivers don't like people and they don't want to be around them, their energy bothers them, but they're supposed to be affecting yes, people, so yes. they stay home. So they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. A lot of the second waivers, some of the first and the second do get married, but a lot of them don't want to because it's just, uh, it, 
It's it sticky, it's against dense, you. yes. And the second wave especially, they don't want to have children because they said having children creates karma and they don't want to make any more karma. They want to do what they're supposed to do and get out of here. They mm -hmm. don't want to be stuck here because mm -hmm. if they create karma, they're going to have to stay. So many of them don't want children and they work from their home. The second waivers do, so keep away from people. But they're very gentle, loving people. And I asked them one time, well, why did the first wave have such a hard time? And they said, somebody has to be the beginning. Somebody has to be the one that cr creates the path, the way shore. And they started, and then the others, the second wave, followed, so they had an easier time. Yes, and that makes sense. That's the and difference. now their children are these little amazing little three, four, five, six. Well, not theirs. It's just the third wave. The third wave, yeah, yes. Saying. The third wave of Because beings. some of them some don't want be, children. Right. Some of them could be, they're born to whomever, but that next one is really interesting. The third wave are the, the children, and some of them now are in their teens. But these are the hope of the world. They're the gift of the world. They're here to really make a difference. And, um, of course, the last thing these children should be do, done is put on medicine oh, and medication. Gosh. Oh, That's the, the last thing not even because they are functioning at a different level. They have come in with all of their genetics. Everything is in place because they are a totally new species. And I've spoken at conferences about the new children where they're trying to educate the educators. And they have panels of these kids. And, you know, they're always saying, well, they're bo they're disruptive in the classrooms. That's why they have to put them on the medication. And they've said at the conferences, the reason is they're disruptive is because they're bored. Yes. They said the, they say the teacher would ask them for an answer to a problem, a math problem or something. They tell them the answer. The teacher wants to know, how did you find the answer? And they said, I just know it. And to them, that's not enough. They want them to explain how they came by it. So that's very aggravating to one yes. of these children. And another thing, they said they go over and over and over again the same material when I got it the first time. So they're bored. So what I was told to tell people, the teachers and the parents, is to give these kids challenges. But the other kids are doing the other stuff. Take these kids aside, maybe give them a special project, a paper to write or something different that will challenge their minds. And they said, even if you just give them something, the younger ones, something to tear apart and put back together again. Yes. It's giving them a challenge. So they can use their creativity and their yeah. knowledge. Yes. Otherwise, they're sitting around, well, I, I don't, you know, I'm bored. I don't want to do this again. Give them something different. And that's what, how they should be treated. And they have a different way of thinking because they do grasp everything so quickly. So what are they being, they've incarnated specifically for um, helping guide humanity, uh, what, not just technologically, but in terms of science, in, in every which way, because of their ability yeah, to retain like knowledge? Yeah, like I said, they're the gift of the world. Yeah. Uh, Nova had a special, oh, it's been a few years ago now, where some of these kids were 10 years old and have already graduated from college. Yes. And some of these have already formed their own organizations. And it's interesting that a lot of the organizations they are found, have founded have to do with helping the children of the world. Yes, yes, I'm so aware of that. So this is where they are going. So they're going to be much more giving the gift of um, not just crea creating conscious community again on the planet, mm -hmm. using... Getting it back to what it's supposed to be. Getting it back to what it's supposed because to be, Because the yes. rest of them are caught into the wheel of karma. They don't yeah. know how to solve their own problems, right. let alone the world's problems. These people don't have those uh, basic karmic problems, so they can just go in a different way. I, uh, and they're putting the world into this new world, the new earth, because we're headed toward a wonderful time. Yes, that, the that's the good news. Technology will be used in a wonderful way. So many wonderful things are happening. So these new children have a part in it. And the first and second waves have a part, but they've had difficulty. And so from this point forward, <clears throat> it should become much more harmonious for the beings that are choosing to incarnate during this be. period. Because as you write about, this period is going to lead us to essentially parallel Earths in a sense. Yes.